Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, with House Bill 1240 being on the precipice of getting out of the House of Representatives, then moving to the Senate, and there being a real chance that we can see a semi-automatic rifle ban at this legislative station in Washington State, it has many of you asking a lot of questions. And yes, we do routinely check the questions in the comments section below. And when we see the same question popping up over and over, we figure, hey, this is an opportunity to get you folks ed educated with a video. So that's exactly what we're going to do today because we've seen this question pop up a lot. It's a concerning question, so we're going to talk about it. We're also going to talk about maybe a little workaround to this dilemma. So today, let's spend a couple very important minutes and talk about what happens if Inslee signs an assault weapon ban before your firearm is delivered? Okay, before we get going down the road we are going down, I am super proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Aero Precision. That's right, founded in 1995 as a manufacturer of aircraft parts, Aero Precision has now evolved into one of the premier OEMs for AR components and AR parts anywhere in the United States. What's an OEM? Well, that's an original equipment manufacturer and there's not a lot of them in the United States. Listen, what's really set Aero Precision apart from a lot of their other competitors? Well, that's two things. Number one, their innovation, and number two, the quality of their products. Aero Precision's products truly do speak for themselves. Now, some of you may know this and some of you may not, but Aero Precision is a locally owned company. It operates right out of Lakewood, Washington. And listen, with House Bill 1240 kicking around that entire operation and all of those jobs are in jeopardy. So right now, we want to help everybody at Aero Precision. We want all of you to help everybody at Aero Precision also. So right now, if you visit them at aeroprecisionusa.com, anything you find in their inventory that you want, if you use the promo code WGL15, that is WGL15, you will receive 15% off. Now this goes for lower receivers, upper receivers, any other component or parts that you may want. So for more information, visit our good friends and our local company, Aero Precision at aeroprecisionusa.com. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is this hypothetical, and it's not that crazy, which is you go to buy yourself a semi-automatic rifle because you're really worried that your state, let's call your state Washington, um, is about to ban the commercial sale and your ability to purchase those things. And after you filled out your paperwork, but before the transfer is complete, Governor Inslee signs that legislation. Now, the reason this is a more realistic hypothetical than you may think is let us remember, and we talked about it in this video right here, there's an emergency enactment clause in House Bill 1240, which means the minute Governor Inslee signs it, it becomes effective law. So this is a realistic hypothetical. So just to give you guys an understanding of what exactly we are talking about here is we go and purchase our firearm on this day, do our 4473 and all of that. Now remember, since we're purchasing a semi-automatic rifle under RCW 9.41.092, we have a mandatory 10 business day waiting period. So that means that the soonest that we could actually take possession of this firearm would be 10 days after the date that we've done the paperwork. What happens if King Inslee signs House Bill 1240 into legislation sometime during this window of time? Well, the answer, unfortunately, is it's no bueno for you, the purchaser, because if that were to happen, I guarantee you the FFL is going to cancel the sale, you're going to be refunded your money, and you are going to be out that firearm. And there is no doubt in my mind that that is the application of the law. Let me explain to you why. Now, the sources that we're going to be citing to today is House Bill 1240 itself, as well as RCW 9.41.010, the definitional section of our firearm codes. Now, if House Bill 1240 were to become law, the minute the governor signs it, this piece of legislation would be in effect. No person in this state may manufacture, import, distribute, sell, or offer for sale any assault weapon except as authorized in this section. And then again, as we talked about in this video right here, there are very limited exceptions, none of which are going to apply here. So that would become absolutely effective the minute the ink is dry on the new legislation. Now, here's the problem, okay? When we take a look at the definition of distribute, as defined in RCW 9.41.010, we're going to see that if an FFL were to deliver 
possession of a semi-automatic rifle or any type of now banned assault weapon at any point after Governor Inslee has signed that legislation, they in fact would be in violation of the law. Because distribute is defined by RCW 9.41010 as distribute means to give out, provide, make available, or deliver a firearm or large capacity magazine to any person in this state with or without consideration whether the distributor is in state or out of state. Distribute includes, but is not limited to, filling orders placed in this state online or otherwise. Distribute also includes causing a firearm or large capacity magazine to be delivered in this state. So as you can see, the FFL, if they deliver that firearm to you after King Inslee has signed this into legislation, they're engaged in criminal activity. They are engaged in the unlawful distribution of an unlawful assault weapon. And what we have not talked about on House Bill 1240, but that's something else that the FFLs need to be aware of, is there's a whole new section in this bill that creates a whole new cause of civil action under the Public Nuisance and Consumer Protection Act for those who are engaged in continuing to sell these now unlawful assault weapons. So the bottom line is this, is if you've ever thought about stocking up, now is exactly the time to do it. But let's say you don't really want to deal with this 10-day waiting period. Is there a way to do that? Yes, there is. And in doing so, you're also going to provide government with the least amount of traceable data. Now, we've done a video where we really geeked out about it, and it was this video right here. But the bottom line is this, is in the state of Washington, if you purchase a handgun, or in this case, a semi-automatic rifle, the FFL is going to be required to fill out a firearm transaction application. And this goes to the Washington State Department of Licensing and will list the exact make and model of that semi-automatic rifle, thus giving state government another data point to know about the existence of this firearm. And, of course, if you purchase that completed semi-automatic rifle, you will be waiting a minimum of 10 business days before you can take possession. However, if you purchased a lower receiver, even a completed lower receiver, such as this totally awesome model from Aero Precision, well, at that point, after you fill out your Form 4473, two things occur. Number one, there is no 10-day waiting period under 941092 because this is not considered to be a semi-automatic rifle. And therefore, as soon as your background check clears, you're allowed to take possession of it. Number two, and this is important, is because this is not a semi-automatic rifle, there is no Washington State firearm transaction application that will be filled out. So not only will you take receipt of it much sooner, the data left on the 4473 is considerably less searchable than the data that's left on a purchase of a completed rifle, and there is no data transmitted to the state of Washington. So if, by chance, you are thinking right now, hey, this might be a good time to start stocking up, I would highly recommend that you purchase lower receivers and then upper receivers and you do final assembly yourself. Now, I've had some people say, hey, I'm not a gunsmith. I don't know how to do final assembly. But listen, when we're talking about taking a completed lower receiver and a completed upper receiver, you could find a YouTube video on how to do it. It's going to take you all of about 15 seconds to complete that build. So, yes, there is a possibility that you could be in the middle of a firearm transaction and King Inslee absolutely terminates it by merely signing a piece of legislation. My advice to you is twofold. Number one, if you were ever going to stock up, stock up now. And number two, what is the best way that I think you should be doing it? My personal opinion is I think you should be purchasing completed lower receivers for the reasons that we previously stated. Listen, you may have more questions about this dilemma or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You can always contact Washington Gun Law. The contact information is in the description box down below. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we preach all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.